the high ceilings of the deserted Morecambe Winter Gardens. The Most Haunted team are exploring the Morecambe Winter Gardens, a once magnificent theatre which played host to all the glittering greats of the entertainment world, now sadly a mere shadow of its former self, but allegedly alive with paranormal activity. We invited medium and psychic artist Brian Shepherd to join our investigation as a guest and to give his insights into what spiritual energy this incredible building might hold. We take our first uncertain steps in a lit walk around in what was once the stalls of this huge edifice. A floor plan appears, a section flashes, ground floor stalls, room temp 11 degrees. Right, here we are in the foyer of the Winter Gardens. It's absolutely just one of the most incredible places I think we've ever investigated. Have you, have you got all your bits? Ready? Yeah, I've got EMF meter, temperature sensors, humidity. I'm keeping a, a very close watch on temperature because okay. that's going to affect people physiologically tonight. But I'll, I'll keep you posted. All right, then. Brian. Absolutely wonderful place. So full of, full of energy. Yeah, really? Full of energy. Oh, that's yes. good. That's and what we want to hear. You know, my immediate impression, immediate impression is that there's, a conf there's conflicting energy. There's... The, there's, two, the, there's two sides to this. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's two main areas. There's, the, the, there's an area here on the left side that is colder, uninviting. Okay. And yet here, I'm drawn, a much warmer energy. A, interesting. What, for the, what, just in this particular yeah, area Yeah, yeah, just as I'm standing here, which is pretty central to this... Uh, to, to the building. So what, can there's, you see, can you see entities? Can you see, or is it just an energy? At there's the a, an energy, of, a, a feeling that you, know, you can pick up on the, the sounds and the, the gaiety of this, of this place. And yet, also, there's something else. There's a darker side. Yvette and Brian head up a wide staircase with an ornate marble banister. The floor plan appears again. Another section flashes. Ground floor staircase, room temp, 9 degrees. On the staircase... What are you picking up as you, as you walk up the staircase? I want you to tell me what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what, everything. What's happening is that there is an intensity and in energy levels as we, as we climb here, but, but also there's... There's a coldness, OK? There's a, there, there seems to be a drop in temperature. Now, that might be that there physically is. Yeah. But um, there, is is an, there is an energy, an intense energy somewhere. On these and stairs? There, yeah, on these... Well, it, yeah, on the stairs. There's something about the staircase. Brian hesitates and shuts his eyes. Yeah, once, once again, my feeling is that something... Yeah, definitely. Something happened on this... Something occurred on this staircase. And what is it? A figure in grey, in like a suit. It may be Edwardian clothing. A lady. Right, keep going. Stepping keep going. backwards. A couple saying farewell, pulling away, st st stumbling, yeah. falling, yeah. crumpled here. Badly hurt, yeah, badly injured. When you say they were saying their final farewells? Maybe an argument, there was a tussle, there's some sort of pulling away at the top of the stairs. Why is she still haunting here? I think because of their parting, of the trauma in, that she felt, mm -hmm. the argument that they had. They were a couple, they were lovers. She pulled away. Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you not hear that? Yeah, yes. It's right yes. just in front of Leslie. Yes. It was a, uh, a, woman. a woman's cry, but Absolutely. very faint. That's and that's where that, she you? belongs. That's where she feels she belongs. A couple. They were lovers. She pulled away. Did you hear that? Uh, we know for a fact that a woman at the Edwardian period, not long after the death of Victoria, had a married lover and right. they argued on these stairs. He called her back, apparently, when she tried to leave him. It's very strong. And it probably upset you, because it's quite powerful. And she went back to him, 
and then she's known to have fallen. She hurt herself terribly badly. These stairs are pretty stuff, yeah. you know, hard stuff. And she died later in hospital of her injuries. Right, okay. But... Did you hear that? Did you... Did you... We all heard that. God! There's some... And she died later in hospital of her injuries. Right, okay. But... Did you hear that? Did you... Did you... We all heard that. I have to tell you this too. This is why she may haunt, and maybe your skills will show us. We don't know if he pushed her and killed her accidentally mm. by this push or whether she fell because of her skirts. You've indicated skirts. My feeling is that she fell accidentally because well, of her skirts. Well, thank goodness for that. Yvette and Brian head up the staircase towards the first floor with Kieran skulking in the background. The floor plan appears. The rear left corner flashes. First floor architect office, room temp, eight degrees. Brian gestures with his hands held apart. We're being drawn over to this is this another, yeah, another room here? Yeah. An entirely different, entirely different smell and feel to this room. Can what you try and describe what is the it? smell? Yeah, what is it? Almost like, almost like some sort of off, well, paper, you know, like an office. Yeah. Okay, sort of charts, plans. There's something about this room. And there's a, there's a distinct... <laughs> my God! Now, be careful. Right, okay. Where what? Where did that come from? There's a distinct know. feeling here of two... There's a presence of two beings. We're being, we're being overlooked. We said two beings, two, yeah, two, two women, two... Yeah, two male, two male. There's a, it's a male presence. How old are these gentlemen? Middle-aged gentlemen. Where would they be sitting in the room? Where would they be sitting? Just, just apart, opposite one another. Like if um, I was here. Yeah, if you were there, and, I was, and I was somewhere like here. Yeah. And we are facing one another. Right. That's that's the feeling I get about this about this room, and there's. There's names as well. There's names. Give me the names. There's names as well. Bill. Will. Who? William. 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 Two. And yet two. 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 What? Two, what? Two, wi two Williams. Two Williams. Yeah. Two Williams. Surname. Surname. Any surname. 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 Even an William. William. Little. Yes. Keep going. William. Little. Little wood, little wood. Mangle. 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 Can you give me more on these on these paper? They're sat opposite they're, each they're, other. What they're are they doing? Plans. What are they doing? They're planning, plans planning what? something. What are they doing? Can you see what's on the plans? Are you just seeing lines or are you seeing a shape? No, the there's shapes. There's shapes, shapes on the plans. The shapes. The plans of something. All that information there. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I'm glad you stopped me. <laughs> it was just incredible. You're in the architects who designed this fantastic raised Titanic of a theatre. Um, right. This is their office. This is with this light here where they drew up the plans for this extraordinary place. <coughs> and the names were William Mangle and William Henry Littlewood. Littlewood. That's right. They are known to haunt this theatre because this is their baby. They designed some incredible other things, but this was a fantastic place. Yeah, because as soon as we walked in this door, we were overlooked by two distinct... And be careful, because I don't think, you know, they want us in this office, frankly. Is that why the wood was thrown? Well... <laughs> it's interesting they're about building, and they chuck a bit of building at yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely, and a piece falls down on us. The floor plan of the Winter Garden spins onto a glowing black and green grid. The roof flies off and a section flashes. Ground floor dressing rooms, room temp, eight degrees. A darkened brick room. So who's active in here? Yeah, there's a strong, there's a strong female presence in here. Some, it's something to do with dressing, like dressing room. Mm -hmm. Mistress, wardrobe, and yet, and yet, that she seems... It doesn't seem that way. It seems as though she's... 
almost a dancing at times or considers herself to be a dancer. Okay, how old is this woman? I would say she was late late thirties, maybe. Late thirties. Yeah, late late thirties as though perhaps she had perhaps she had been a dancer. Mm. Um but she's definitely in charge of wardrobe dressing. Okay. Oh. So is that the road I can that? hear? Or can anybody anybody you else hear, hear that? that? There's like a moaning. A high pitched moaning. No, or a low like a moan. Do you hear that again? Hear? It was very faint that one, but it was a Do you hear that? The fact that no, we're not hearing it as well as you means it's coming from behind you. Do you not I hear didn't any hear of that it? last one. I heard the one before that. And this, something is, is trying to communicate with us. Who? Some, this woman? This woman is trying to communicate with us, you know, and trying to, what's she trying to tell us? What is it about? It's about, I don't know, it's about her regret. She has a regret over her, what, her career, her... She was a dancer. Yeah? She was a dancer on the stage. Something happened. Oh there. my God! Did you hear that? Yeah, I flipping well She's trying did. to communicate with you. She's calling out to you. She's calling out to you now. Really? Yeah, she's calling out to you. What Just call back. Her? What's her name? I haven't got a name. I haven't got a name in there. Were you a dancer? Were you a dancer? Talk to me. Say yes. All right. There's oh, someone you... singing. No, someone's singing. There was singing. There's There's something. It's a performance, isn't it? Yes. This is a performer. She's trying to show us that she can. Right. I can tell you, we have verification that there was a woman here who was wardrobe mistress who was embittered because she hadn't quite made it as a dancer. She felt she was every bit as talented as any woman here, but had to turn her hand to the needle because she... This is quite overwhelming. Yeah. Because she didn't want to leave the theatre. Okay. We've got someone singing. Okay, yeah. I'm not... Like, and it's like a little growl. That... And this is very strong now. That reg you, you're not you're not focusing on that regular tapping, are you? No, so no, 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 no. Because no, no, of the no, rain, okay. you couldn't use. Oh, whoa, hey, hey. Okay. And something against it hit me now. Where did that come from? It's kind of flowed straight from the ceiling area. It did. Yeah. What straight down? Yeah. It did, but the yeah. ceiling isn't made of that. No, it probably. But there's a bit of plaster there. Bounced off. Though. Yeah. It's pla Yes, it does actually. It's come off that brickwork. Yeah. It's come off the brickwork and straight down and hit me. The thing I'm interested in is you're getting the singing, which seems to be a nice part of it. You're focusing on this area being good and trying to communicate, and now you just get an object thrown at you. Is that just attention-seeking, or it seems like quite an aggressive act to me? Why would that be thrown? <laughs> what the hell was that? Do you know that? what I think? Yeah, I think in a bizarre <laughs> way. I don't think it is real aggression. I think it's a way of communication. So okay, it, didn't it hit, hit me. Mm. Yeah, but come on. But did you hear that growl? I heard it, yeah. I heard What's it. What's the growl thing for then? If that's not. I mean, that doesn't sound like someone singing. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't I, now. I know what you singer. mean, Brian. I mean, mm. I'm, everybody's moved but, back here. Have you yeah, noticed? I know, because, Even we, you. <laughs> because we feel less certain. Yeah. And, How you know, certain do you feel that it's, it's all nice well, and Well, exactly. Jolly I feel less certain that it is. <laughs> it is now, and I think we should perhaps back up a bit. With guest medium Brian Shepherd confirming the widely held belief that the theatre is indeed divided into two parts, good opposing evil, and his encounters with several phantoms, including the men who designed the building, a woman who had fallen to her death down the marble staircase, and the spirit of an unfulfilled dancer. The team decide to switch to night vision and resume our investigation. What further activity will the Cloak of Darkness allow us to discover? Green night vision illuminates the team. She's there, right behind you, right between the figure and you. What the f was that? The most haunted team touch a glass at a seance. 